Today, the challenges that threaten the sustainability of the defense software industry are cybersecurity and austerity. If the CMMI can be adapted to respond to the challenge of cybersecurity, the senior executive would not have to split attention between each one or to choose one over the other. To what extent can the CMMI be adapted to respond to these challenges of our time? The purpose of this research is to ask and answer the questions needed to explore the limits of the CMMI as a tool in cybersecurity and an efficient carrier for its dissemination in this period of austerity. <clears throat> this project is envisioned as a review of the CMMI and its effectiveness as a means to assure cybersecurity and build security in practices. Over the past 20 years, the CMM and the CMMI dissemination effort succeeded, and the result is widespread use throughout the defense industry and government and spotty use in the commercial sector. With the emergence of cybersecurity as a threat to national security and global competitiveness, there is the challenge to extend the CMMI to include cybersecurity software assurance and build security in practices. If successful, the use of the CMMI dissemination infrastructure and distribution channels would supply the carrier for cybersecurity solution dissemination. DOD and DARPA have spent many hundreds of millions of dollars on initiatives such as the Internet, the ADA programming language, and the Capability Maturity Model Integration, CMMI. Today, the challenges that threaten the sustainability of the defense software industry are cybersecurity and austerity. The Internet has laid the predicate for the emergence of cybersecurity as a threat to national security and global competitiveness. While it may be possible to detect viruses in software programs and systems, it is not possible to assert the claim that a computer program is virus-free. The ADA language dissemination effort has stalled. Consequently, ADA is no longer a factor going forward. The CMMI dissemination effort succeeded, and the result is widespread use throughout industry and government. With the emergence of cybersecurity as a threat to national security and global competitiveness, there is the challenge to extend the CMMI to include cybersecurity software assurance and build security in practices. If successful, the use of the CMMI dissemination infrastructure and distribution channels would supply the carrier for cybersecurity solution dissemination. The Department of Defense faces austerity challenges. The government understands what it needs, uh, which are best stated by the challenges outlined by Dr. Ashton Carter, Undersecretary of Defense for Acquisition Technology and Logistics, ATNL. The message here is to deliver more without more through better buying power. The challenge to improve tradecraft and services acquisition is aimed directly at the software engineering function and the prime contractors. To what extent can the CMMI be adapted to respond to these challenges, including cybersecurity and austerity? The purpose of this research is to outline the questions needed to explore the limits of the CMMI as a tool in cybersecurity and a carrier for its dissemination in this period of austerity. The project is a review of the CMMI and its effectiveness as a means to assure cybersecurity and build security in practices. The cybersecurity threat provides concrete confirmation that America's infrastructure and education are being stressed by the demands of globalization, with the resulting impact on national security and global competitiveness. The austerity and affordability challenge has the effect of tying our hands just when the starter's gun signals the start of the race. So cybersecurity represents a not-so-perfect storm. Just how are we responding? Of course, more than economics is involved with the insider threat accounting for 80% of cyber attacks, an enterprise has the means to obtain passive forensics on every employee all the time. While management may have the means, does it possess the will? A panel discussion at the Brookings Institution observed that cybersecurity incentives and governance were poorly defined. 
With the wholesale exfiltration of data and intellectual espionage, the lack of precision as to what lies in the public interest and what risks can be tolerated, the lack of commitment to affirmative standards, the wholesale neglect in dealing with unsophisticated attacks and low-hanging fruit, and the lack of capability and innovation maturity to deal with advanced persistent threats, it is clear that the lessons of cybersecurity still need to be learned. While the government may have the insight to frame the issue, does it possess the will and ability to act? Thanks to Watts Humphrey, who asked and answered the important question whether the quality management principles that have been applied to hardware could be successfully applied to software. Uh, Watts went on to identify the steps needed to demonstrate the benefits of using scientific methods for software. First, the methods must be generally understood and accepted in the software community. Second, there must be management, academic, and government support required for widespread use. Finally, these methods must be demonstrated to other fields of intellectual work. Over the past 20 years, the CMM and the CMMI program have succeeded in demonstrating the first two steps. The CMMI dissemination effort has succeeded, and the result is widespread use throughout industry and government and acceptance by academia. It is now time to demonstrate the applicability of these methods to cyberspace, the Internet, and the full spectrum of national defense and critical infrastructure systems and systems of systems on which the nation's security and competitiveness depends. The predicate has been laid. There is one difficulty to be overcome, and that difficulty is self-imposed. It originated during Watts Humphrey's stewardship of the Software Engineering Institute's Software Process Program. During the initial development and prototyping of the capability maturity model, the software product engineering uh, key process area dealing with the software development lifecycle activities was purposely limited to the generic process steps associated with process assurance and skirted the engineering and technology methods and practices essential to the production of high quality software products. This difficulty continues today in the CMMI. As a result, it is not, respon it is not possible to use the CMMI to build security in. Correcting this oversight is job one if the CMMI is to be adapted to respond to cybersecurity challenges. Before the CMMI can be considered a player in addressing the challenges that threaten the sustainability of the defense software industry, notably cybersecurity and austerity, in all its dimensions, the following questions need to be asked and answered. Number one. To what extent does the CMMI ensure build security in and the production of trusted software systems? Number two, to what extent is software security assurance included in the CMMI? Number three, to what extent does the CMMI satisfy the engineering practice dimensions of assuring resiliency under stress, where resiliency is the ability to anticipate, avoid, withstand, mitigate, and recover from the effects of adversity, whether man-made or natural, under all circumstances of use. Number four, what is the correspondence between CMMI maturity levels and security levels for cyberspace products? To what extent does the CMMI protect against global supply chain intrusions? To what extent does the CMMI account for joint hardware and software cyber attacks, such as Stuxnet? To what extent does a CMMI footprint contribute to cyber forensics and attribution? What role or standing does the CMMI have in stimulating the development of a high assurance software and hardware industry? Number nine. To what extent does the CMMI factor into establishing economic, legal, and regulatory frameworks required for international harmonization of cybersecurity policy and measures? Number 10. To what extent does the CMMI inform the international norms of behavior with respect to cybersecurity? Number 11. To what extent 
is affordability an issue in trading off the use of CMMI as the departure point for cybersecurity solution versus a cybersecurity solution derived from a collection of models, including the CMMI, RMM, BSIMM, and PRM. Number 12, to what extent does the CMMI enable fixed price contracting of large scale software intensive programs? To what extent is the dissemination of a cybersecurity solution facilitated and accelerated by the use of CMMI as the departure point for cybersecurity solution versus a cybersecurity solution derived from a collection of models? Number 14. To what extent can the CMMI serve as the carrier uh, for cybersecurity? Number 15. What are the tenets of cybersecurity doctrine the CMMI uh, could be used to promulgate? Number 16. To what extent can the CMMI be adapted to unify and harmonize the terminology of the cybersecurity domain in use in government and countrywide? The CMMI does not address cybersecurity, yet cybersecurity has emerged as a palpable threat to global competitiveness and national security. Furthermore, cybersecurity solutions lack pull, especially in the commercial sector. If the CMMI is adapted for cybersecurity, a cyber CMMI would serve as the carrier for dissemination for cybersecurity solutions. The principal finding reveals a shortfall in the CMMI as a foundation and carrier for cybersecurity solutions as the absence of life cycle activities leading directly to a lack of trustworthiness in the software products designed, implemented, and fielded. Here's my contact information. I would be happy to receive questions and have discussions with people on this important subject.